Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We give God all the praise and all the glory. We have gone through 2021 and we give him the praise. We are here by his grace and by his mercy. And he loves us. He cares for us. As the song said, brighter days, brighter days. Look for brighter days. Look for a brighter year as we trust God. Thank the Lord for salvation. Thank him for his Holy Spirit. Thank him for his holy word that he has given us. You know, we think about the spread of this virus give us opportunity to spread the gospel faster than the virus. That's what we're here for, to share his holy, glorious word. Thank you, Jesus, for your patience. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your care and provision. We glorify the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. We ask, Lord, that you bless your children, those who are not able to be here because of the condition. We pray for the healing of the sick, the comfort of the bereaved, and we pray, Lord, for the strength of the weak. We pray for lost souls, that there will be salvation. There's an opportunity out there. Many are looking for a way out. And Lord, you are that way. You are the way, the truth, the light. Let us glorify your holy glorious name. We pray for your man servant that you would bless him, Lord, as he has prepared. And we pray, Lord, that you would give him the words that would change lives to your glory. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
for the new year. We want to say happy new year again to you. And what God has for me is for me. I know without a doubt he will bring us out. Be encouraged that whatever God has for you is no by faith that it shall come to pass.
Now, faith is being tried. Amen. Uh, and our thoughts are being tried. And we, even we ourselves in many areas are being tried. But we thank God today that we are in the house of God. Thank God that you are in here with us by way of presence, by way of being uh, on the um, Facebook Live and the conference call. We thank God for all of you. Thank God for all the saints for all that you do all the time. We know that we need each other. Amen. This is a time where we need each other. Amen. We need the support of each other. We need the prayer of each other. We need the love of each other. We need the help of each other. We need the encouragement of each other, the inspiration of each other. This is the time where we need the prayer and the support. Amen. And if we thank God for that. We thank God that we have people. And one of the things that we were thankful for, even for the gifts that God give us, we thank God for Jesus, but we also thank God for people. Amen. How many thank God for people today? Um, so we thank God for all of you. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Because if there were no people, I wouldn't have no purpose. Amen. Tell your neighbor, if there were no people, I would have no purpose. Amen. But because there are people, I have a purpose. I mean, why don't you say that? If there would be no people, I would have no purpose. Amen. Amen. I would have no purpose if there was nobody in the world but me. Amen. That's why God said it's not good for a man to be alone. How many thank God for he said it's not good. It, that is not good for us. Amen. God said that. We didn't say that. He said that. You know, you might feel like you don't need nobody. But when God looks down from his place, from his throne, he said you need somebody. You need somebody. That's why he put people around us, and we thank God for that. We thank God for you being in this house today. Thank God for those who showed up on on uh, on Wednesday night service. Amen. We had uh, announced the back and forth, you know, whether we were going to be here, whether we we're going to be on uh, face, Facebook Live or Zoom. And so, my wife decided when we come, we just come to church. Amen. And I know some people got uh, the word that it was canceled. And, but we had people that come, and we was here, and I said, well, it's good that we was here because I wouldn't want them to come and nobody be here. So those of you that was absent because you got the word, you ex it's called an excused absence, right? <laughs> you hear what I say? It's an excused absence because you are excused because of the information that you receive. We love you and appreciate you, but when God changes my direction, I have to change my direction with him. I mean, know that when God changes something, I have to change with the direction that, that uh, with him. And so we did it. We glad to see we We came here and uh, I was just impressed as well as blessed. How I many was impressed and blessed by being here? And if you join in on the Facebook Live, you heard some testimonies of the great thing God is doing. I want you to know God is still moving by his spirit and he's moving now. Amen. He promised that he will be here. Amen. How many believe that when two or three will assemble themselves together in his name, he promised to be here. And he told us, I will never leave you, not forsake you. So, I love that. The word, the word. I thank God for the word today. How many thank God for the word today? And sometimes you can say, you promise that you're going to be here. And I believe that. I, I told my wife when I left on, on uh, wife's night Eve service, before I left here, I said, boy, and the Lord showed up, not only in the building, but I can feel it in me. It's a wonderful thing. I know mean, that's a wonderful thing. Yes. Somebody said it's not about your feeling, but 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 I thank God that I can feel his spirit inside of me. Amen. I may thank I may thank God, but I thank God for that. So he blessed us. I hope you were blessed. Amen. But I know I was blessed. Tell your neighbor, I hope you were blessed. But I know I was I was blessed. I'm just blessed to be here today. Give me a Bible if you turn with us uh, to St. John chapter 1. 
verse 1. second verse that's in that chapter is verse 17. I'm going to read through the rest of the verses to get there. For the law was given by Moses but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debts, and we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever. Father, we pray that you bless us indeed. Father God, that you would expand our territory, our reach, expand our part in your kingdom. Keep your hand upon us. Keep us from evil. Help us not to cause any harm, but make us a blessing today. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be accepted in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength, our redeemer. Thy word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even Divine asunder, joints and marrow, soul and spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. All things are naked and open unto him, of whom we have to do. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We pray that you save somebody, yes. you heal somebody, you. that you deliver somebody, that you set somebody yes. free. We ask Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. For Jesus, and we pray that whatever you do, we will give you a name to pray. Yeah, the glory for we ask it in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen. You may be seated. We thank God for all of you that are here today. We truly feel extremely blessed to have you present here with us. We know in the difficulty this time, they talk about the things that are going on that are in the world that are taking place even today and and there are many people who are looking and they're saying is the church uh, is the world under judgment amen and so uh, they, they they will say when the clash come that God is dealing with sin but I want to let you know that there's going to be a judgment day when God going to deal with everything. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He's going to deal with things in time. So don't try to press it into motion now. Because there's going to be a judgment day. The Bible said we all will stand before the judgment seat of God. And to give an account of the deeds that are done in our body. And so I thank God for the word. Because the word of God, which is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That was from the beginning. From the beginning was the Word. Amen. John, John is different from uh, the other writers of the gospel in the sense that he doesn't take uh, the origin of Jesus back to Adam. Amen. He doesn't take it back to Abraham. But he takes it back to the real beginning. The beginning of God. The beginning with God. And in that beginning it says that the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. That is so powerful that we the enemy. The same was in the beginning with God. So he didn't just arrive on the scene in Bethlehem of Judea. He didn't just arrive in, 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 the, in that manger. He was there in the beginning. I thank God for John because John gave us a insight. And I talked about how God uh, 
through Jesus has been brought closer to us in, 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 a, in a person of Jesus, that, that he was human and divine, that, uh, that he had a divine uh, origin before his new beginning, amen? See, sometimes we were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy without blame before him in love, before we ever got here. God had chosen us before we ever got into our mother's womb. He'd already chosen. The Bible said, before I put you in the womb, said I knew you. I knew who you were going to be from the beginning because that, that was a word in God. I want you to understand, we did not just accidentally come along when we came along. We were there in the beginning, in the Bible. God knew exactly the time, the season that we were going to be in. He knows about everything that is going on. And, and it comforts me to know that he's there in the beginning. There are some things that's going to happen in the meantime. But I want you to know from the beginning to the end, he's God. Amen? Some of you need to be excited. He's God. I don't care what goes on. He's still God. Amen? He's still awesome. He, he's still mighty. He, he's still all knowing. He's still omniscient. We don't know everything. But he was there in the beginning. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was a true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own re received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the son of God. Even to them that believe on his name. How many believe on the name of Jesus? Yes. Which was born not of the blood, yes. not the will of flesh, not the will of man, but of God. Yes. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And John said, and we beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We ought to thank God for grace. Amen. I believe now that we are in a period of grace. Y'all have heard of a grace period, right? A grace period, a time that we can get it right, a time that we can make amends, a time we can get it together. There are some people who believe that that God is in the process of going about, and, and he's killing all these folks. We know that, that, that that's what Jesus, Jesus said. He said, the thief comes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I come that you might have life, yes, and that you may have it more yes, abundantly. So we got to get the record straight. God, I don't think God is killing all these folks. Uh, there's a devil on the loose. He messing with people's mind, and he make people think God is doing it when the devil is doing it. Amen. The Bible said that's what the devil came to do. Yes, Jesus said, "I come that you may have life, and that you may have it yes, more yes, abundantly." So you can believe a lie, or you can believe the truth yes, sir. in Jesus. Yeah. The problem with the word is that people don't believe the word. They don't accept the word. They go back and get another word and try to replace the word that God has already given. But I'm going to keep the word. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to keep the word that God gives me. I'm going to stand on the word that he gives me. I'm going to speak the word that he gives me. And I'm not going to put people put words in my mouth. Because I go to God to get a word. It's time to seek the word. Amen. I know we go into this prayer and Fasting, and someone asked, doing the Daniel fast? No, we're doing the Jack fast. <laughs> and you should do your fast. Yeah. You should do the Fatino fast. And, and 
you should do your, the fast before God. And the reason why you should do that because your name is not Daniel. You need to do the rest of the fast. You need to do the ruby fast. Amen. You need to do the heal fast. Because we need to fast. How many know that we need to fast and pray? Amen. We need to do our own fast. And ask God to help us in our fasting and in our praying. And in the midst of that, we must seek the Lord in his word. We need to seek the Lord in his word. We need to seek the strength of God's word. I know it's good. You know, we can take patterns out of everybody else, but you need to make it your own. And as the spirit of God leads you, lay it down. Your focus should not be on food, what you're going to eat. It should be on the, on the Lord. Yes, yes. This is a time of seeking the word. Seeking the word. Yes. And understanding the word. Yes, amen. That's going down to here. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the son of God. We not only have to receive that he came into the world, we need to receive his word. I believe that we need to receive his word. As many as receive him, those that receive his word. Some of us people don't, don't, don't receive the word. I know the Bible says that. I know he said that, but I don't understand. Then you need to seek to understand. You need to seek to seek to understand the word. Because when the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That is personal. All right. And so sometimes when, when I'm, I'm at home, I lay on my bed and, and I just, I, I just be laying there and I close my eyes and I'm waiting on God to say something. I seek his attention. I seek his attention. I just lay there and lay in the presence of God and ask him to say something to me, even, even about a word that I got to preach to them this group and the people out there on Facebook Live and things of this nature and, and I get word back from people that someone's, someone was talking, we was talking to somebody in, in uh, Birmingham, Alabama and they were saying to me, Pastor Perkins, thank you for blessing us with this word. This, this word here is so important to me that, 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 that I have to deliver what he gives me. If he gives me something to give you, then I have to give it to you because it's going to help you. How many, how many know it's going to bless you? Because I don't want to give you my words because I can go find some words to give you, but if I give you his word, his word is quick and powerful and it's sharper than a two-edged sword. His, his word will meet you where you need. His word will meet you where you are. His word will help you. I mean, if it can divide joints and marrow, soul and spirit, it can do something about it. It's not in there just, in there, so I'm just going to divide this. Some healing is taking place. Some correction is taking place. Some deliverance is taking place. Amen. So you have to receive the word so you can be healed. Somebody has to receive your healing. With his stripes, I'm healed. You have to receive that with his stripes, I'm healed. There are people that have received the word. They received the message from the doctor. But then they received the word of God. The doctor's word was too. I remember a doc, uh, Brother John Osteen, that's Joel Osteen's father, his wife was sick and she had cancer and, and so they told her that she didn't have but a short term to live. But she grabbed the Bible and started looking at every word with healing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And she started quoting those scriptures every day. She kept quoting those scriptures. She just had received the word. So, Lord, I know what they say, but this is what your word is saying. We have to learn how to stand the word. So she just kept standing there. She kept repeating the word. And so somebody looked at her, she started looking better. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. They kept looking at her, and she kept looking better. Uh -huh. Want to go back to the doctor because something's going I'm not going there until he's finished. The doctor done already told me. He's done everything he can do. But I'm going to the Word and see what God has said in His Word, and I'm going to stand on that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It ain't going to help you. It's not going to help you if you don't receive it. Yes, sir. It's not going to help you if you don't do it. 
Because I'm trying to do it. Don't flunk out on the word. You can flunk out on everything else, but don't flunk out on the word. Now you should know the word for yourself. You know, we got all these kind of teachers and they're trying to teach us. And, and, and maybe they don't even know about That's why they're going to be dealt with. I understand what I teach. I'm going to be responsible for, for the judgment seat of God. So I can't just come up with notion. I have to go before God and say, Lord, now what's going on? What is going on in this season? What is going on in this season? Jesus said, I told you it's going to happen. There's going to be pestilence. They're going to war, the rule of wars. But I didn't say I was doing it. 24th chapter of that. He didn't say he was going to do that. Stuff is just going to happen. But we need to know what to do when it happens. We're not supposed to panic like we don't have all. We in this world, but we're not of this world. We are in the world, change the world. How many believe that we are here to change the circumstance? Yes. But the minute you see him, if you see the word, to them gave he power to become the son of God, even to them that believe on his name, who were born not of blood, not the will of the flesh, not the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory at the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. God bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, or he is before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth by Jesus Christ. And when Jesus got on the earth, there are people that came to him and ask him questions, amen. We need to learn how to ask the word questions. You ever learn how to ask God questions? And look for the answer in the word? You ever ask the Lord to guide you through the, guide me, hold thy breath there, Joel? You ask him to guide you through the word, and you're looking for something for yourself in the word. I'm, this is a teacher. And you, you ask God to guide you. Lord, guide me to an understanding. And one of the things he did for me in this season, I'm just going to share this with you. And I, I made some statements, and people will argue with you. And I, I believe they, they will argue with, uh, with you about what they think. And, and they go back over into the Old Testament and bring that up and forget about what Jesus said and start saying what somebody else said. You can't go back to the Old Testament and talk about what they said back then without coming to the New Testament and finding what Jesus is saying. The Bible said in verse, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Paul tells us the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. It was our tutor. And after the real thing comes, you don't need a tutor anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like when you go to college mm -hmm. and you learn in college the stuff in college. You learn how to do it. But when you get to your job, you don't need a tutor anymore. It's time for action. Yes, sir. It's time to act on what you have believed. Right. Right. But Jesus said grace and truth yes, came through Jesus Christ. Yes, so in the Luke, uh, the 13th chapter, verse 1, that there was present at that season some that told him of the Galilean whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. And Jesus said unto them, Suppose ye that the Galilean was sinners above all the Galilean because they suffered such, such things? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Now Jesus came to the world telling them we need to repent. And, and sometimes we all need to repent of something. Now, of the wrong attitude, of the wrong spirit. We got it wrong. We, we treated it. We just need to repent of our action and our attitude. And sometimes we need to repent about some of the stuff that we be saying. And be dishing it out and giving it to other folks. We need to repent. Jesus said, except you repent. 
You worried about them and what happened to those folks over there. He said, were they worse sinners than anybody else? Do you think that the people that died from COVID-19 are the worst sinners in the world? You know some people that still said it. He didn't kill them, so he'd have to be a just God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If he's killing sinners for sin, yes, <laughs> whole lot of folks be dead. A lot more than that's that, that dead. Now the whole nation would be wiped out. He just go through that white rush out. <laughs> Russia gone, China gone, all. But he didn't come into the world to destroy the world. Jesus said, I come not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God is trying to save folks. He's trying to kill folks. And he wants us to know that God is here. He's trying to save you. And you need to repent before it's too late, before you get COVID-19. If you get COVID-19, God can bring you out of the hospital. God has some people because it's right. This stuff is on everybody. But it, it's happened. Some of the saints died from it. Were they sinners? You can't judge everybody and put everybody in a, in a pickle barrel and say that we don't know how many people are saved in this earth. You can't go around judging this earth. Well, that's what's wrong with the folks. They, 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 they. There are some folks that's doing wrong, but that's where we come in. To let your light shine before all men that they may see your good work and glorify the Father which is in heaven. We need to tell them the truth is in Christ Jesus. He loved you. The Father loved you. He's not doing all that stuff to you. There's something as a consequence of our negligence. Yes, sir. I'm reading one of the pastors many years ago. He was Right, he said, accidents, not punishment. Accident, everything is not punishment. Accidents and not punishment. What he was saying, Jesus was saying, no, that's not the reason. This is not punishment. So they says, there were present at the season, some that told him of the Galileans who blood piled and mingled with their sacrifice. And I don't know if y'all remember this, but over in China, in a laboratory, somebody did something that they shouldn't have done. And the stuff got out and it started spreading through China. Accident, not punishment. And we can't blame God for what people do. Amen. Accident, yes, but not punishment. Yes. Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon said, the people, they had a train wreck. And they wondered, with all the people in the train, were they dead because uh, they were sinners? He said, no, because there were some saints on the train. Yes, and some of the people that died on the train they were church members, and they were saved. He said, accidents. How many know that accidents happen? Yes, we die in this world because we free ball agents. We could be riding down the street and run a red light and kill folks. Yes, right. Accidents, yes, not punishment. We have to understand, accidents, not. The truth is in Jesus Christ. And Jesus now is talking, accidents, and not punishment. This thing is spreading because sometimes lack of action on people's part is causing this stuff to spread. They tell you to go get the shot. Stay away from folks. God ain't making these folks get together. They don't wear no masks. And when they went there, they thought it was safe. That don't mean I can't get it, brother. But I thank God that he can help me with accident. Sometimes people say, you don't have your mask. One day I got in my car and I was in, I was in Kroger's. I was walking through Kroger's. And you know how you fuss at other folks without having a mask? I just forgot to put mine on. And the people were so nice to me. 
They spoke, how you doing, son? I said, I'm doing okay. Then I realized I don't have a mask on. So I went back out to the car and put my mask on. You know what? We need to stop judging folk. You ain't used to wearing a mask all the time. My, we need to help one another. Help each other, right? Doesn't that make sense? Accident. People say, well, how did, how did, who spilled that? Accident. God didn't spill it. We blame every, and, and things on the devil. Accidents. Jesus didn't even blame it on the devil. He didn't blame this on the devil. Yeah, how many know that an accident? How many have ever had an accident? How many had an accident in somebody else's fault? How many had an accident in your fault? Supposing that the Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things, I tell you nay. But except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. I know it's bad now, but if you get a newspaper clip it from a hundred years ago, it was just as bad or worse. It was just as bad or worse. We, 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 we sit around and we try to figure out what are the other, we start guessing. And I'm going to say this to, to, to you. I, I told this to one of my relatives. When you're saying stuff, the devil is trying to get you out of sync to God. When you start saying stuff, God ain't told you. That's not irrelevant. God going to pull some folks to hell when they talk. You don't know nothing about that. And you just talking about it, and you you act like you you all into the soup and the, the can they they can of beans. You know everything about. It. They ask me about people sometimes in the church. One time I was having a prayer meeting, and the young lady came in. She said, "I heard this preacher. Uh, he had an affair, and his wife, and they found out about it. And and his wife, he was at church and up in the pulpit, and his wife slapped him." No, his son walked up in the pulpit and slapped his dad in the pulpit and the father fell dead in the pulpit. He said, what do you think about that? I said, I ain't got time to think about it. That ain't none of my business. I ain't going to say nothing about that. How many know that you ain't supposed to say something about everything? Just because you got a mouth, though, the devil is trying to pull you to hell by your tongue. You're, you're, you're talking, you don't understand stuff, and you just walk around. And blah, 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 blah. You don't know, ask God. If you don't know, search the scriptures. Look in the book. That was here from the beginning. Look in the book. Read the book. Read it right. When it says that uh, the, the Bible said the Lord and the prophet was until John. After John, the gospel has been preached. And that would be should be preached to people. Jesus says that these Galileans were no more sinners than anybody else. Go on. Of those 18 upon whom the tower of Salam fell and slew them, think that they were sinners above all the men that dwell in the room. I tell you, no. But except you should repent, ye should all likewise perish. Jesus is trying to focus from other folks to ourselves. What are you not doing right? You know what everybody else is supposed to be doing right. But what are you not doing? What are, what are you not doing? I mean, you say you sanctified and, and, and full of yourself. What are you not doing? Sometimes you need to do a self-check. Before you do another person, check. Check your attitude, check your spirit, because the devil trying to poison your spirit. Put something in your craw. Y'all know what it is? Put something in your craw. And you're trying to crow with it. Accident in the beginning. Grace and truth. That's why Jesus said, Come in unto me all your labor and a heavy laden. Uh, and I will give you rest. The Bible said, after Jesus had purged us from our sins in Hebrews, then he sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. And what we have to do is accept what he's done. 
He's already purged us. He, he's already cleansed us. Now we have to accept what God has done. See, you got to accept your salvation. If you are saved today, you got to accept that I repented, I asked God to forgive me, and he gave me power after I asked him to forgive me not to do that again. And I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you say, well, I can't, I don't know if I can make it. I'm going to share something with you. You can make it. Amen. They used to tell me, you can make it if you put forth some effort and try to make it. You can make it. You can make it. The law came by Moses, but the law was weak in the flesh. It, 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 it could not do it. And so people say, well, you know the reason why this stuff is happening? What we need to be doing is getting busy and telling people about Jesus. That tell them that he's available to them. Tell them he's here. I preach a message, grace is available to you. You, you can be saved. You, you can have Christ in your life. No matter what you've done, God can forgive you of that. He can change your life. Nothing you've done except you bless him from the Holy Ghost will, can't make you have a permanent trip to hell. So you need to repent before you die. You can't repent when you die. You have to repent now. But I, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. And you need to ask God for help. Amen. I'm wrong. Jesus tells these people that it was not because they were more sinners. So I, I'm believing that when God gave me this word, because I'm sitting there meditating, because I hear these things. And then when I go back in and, and read it, I'm going to be teaching a little bit more about this on Tuesday night so you can come in and be on a part of that because we need to understand what we need to de depend on, that we can depend on his word. I mean, I, you know, how many you got a word from God? If God gives you a word, you go by that word. Don't look at ABC, uh, Fox News, or CNN to get your word. Your word comes from God. They don't have a word for you. So don't spend so much time in their word. Spend your time in the word of God. Yes. Study to show yourself approved. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. He says, the word was made flesh. We beheld John bear witness of him and Christ said, this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. Of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. This is the season of God's grace. We didn't talk about the grace of God. God's grace is sufficient for you. God's grace. I've talked about that on uh, New Year's Eve that, that God said to uh, the, the three times move this thing. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you. Amen. God's grace is sufficient for you. God's grace is sufficient for you. I'm believing, as we keep praying, the Bible says, when we go back to the Old Testament text, and we talk about, if my people will call by my name, what I'm going to pray, we know that that was Solomon asking about the temple, that he, was, he had built this temple, and he said, if the people come in and just pray, in this prayer, would you answer the prayers in this place? And we know that many prayers have been answered in this place. People have been healed, been sick, their lives have been changed. And so when God, my, my word from God was, before all this started, stuff happened, he says, stay where I planted you and stay where I'm blessing you. And I'm going to tell you, I'm a blessed man. How I many thank God that? Yeah, I know you blessed too. I stay where I planted you. Stay where I'm blessing you because I always have questions. And if I didn't have questions, Bible said, ask. And it should be given, seeking his fire, and not in the door will be open to you. If I'm a word for God, I should be able to ask him something. Amen. If you serve God, you ought to be able to ask him something sometime. Now, what's going on? Well, you don't need to know that. You need to stay <laughs> fresh, stay focused, and stay free. Now, what do I need to focus on? You need to focus on my word. Focus on your assignment. Your assignment is not over until God says it's over. That's right. People can tell your assignment is over, but if God don't say it's over, it ain't over. Right. Don't, don't, don't be listening to folks that say your assignment is over. You, you, they don't know your assignment. Amen. You better figure out who you're listening to. You better get your word from the Lord. 
If the Lord tell you, I, I always tell people, if you're sitting around me and God tell you to run away from me, you better get up and run. Right. Amen. Amen. Because I, I'm not trying to keep people around me just to be around me. Why? Because that may not be your assignment. You need to be on your assignment and not worried about, if you don't know what your assignment is, the first thing you should ask God, where is my assignment? And when you get your assignment, you need to find yourself in your space. Because this is your assignment. It's not anybody else's assignment. You know, I, hey, when you get an assignment, I had an assignment at work. You know what I had to do, Pastor Hill? They assigned me to a, a, a department. If I wanted to be in this other department, I couldn't go to that other department to work that day because I knew I was going to get paid. They were looking for me to be where I was assigned. I was responsible for the assignment that I have. And I want you to understand, if God has assigned you here, you have an assignment. And you're responsible for your assignment. And if you're in your assignment, I don't care who don't like you. I don't care who talk about you. I don't care who go against you. You have to fulfill your assignment. There are times when I was a supervisor that people didn't like my decisions. There were times they didn't like what I had to do. They didn't, they, they didn't like what I said. But it didn't matter to me because I had to fulfill my son. I had to answer to a higher power. I had to answer to God. When I had to answer to God, I didn't want to have to answer to you. That's right. I need a word from God. I don't know what you do with your word from God. How many know your word don't have to come through other folks? It may come, but it don't have to come from them. My assignment, I know, is a pastor in this church. And this season of time. I talked to my daughter yesterday. She said, well, honey, well, I'm talking to her. I said, honey, you know, uh, she told me that not God signed you up there. I ain't got nothing to do with it. I said, no, you didn't, honey. But God has blessed us down there. While I'm up here, had nothing to do with it. When, when it comes to your assignment, your word from God, you need your word from God. You need your word from God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And then be dwelt among us, but then you get grace and truth. I love grace and truth because, see, sometimes people like fables. They don't like truth, too much truth. They don't like repenting. People like to be petty, not re they don't want to repent, they want to be petty. Amen, and until we confront some situations and confront some areas, you ain't gonna be no better than you were. Because you get, we get an excuse. Now I excuse you all for not being, because I told you we were gonna be here, and I know if you have underlying condition and you feel for your health, and the Lord tell you to stay home, you stay home. But the Lord tell you to get up out your bed, and get over here to the church, then you need to get out your bed and get over here to the church. Right. But you got a work to do. We got people that need to be saved. You know, I was sitting outside this morning, and a young man come down the street, and his name is Abraham. He says, oh, a whole bunch of folks have died in your church. I said, yes, they have. He said, uh, well, I'm going home, and I'm working on this, uh, this piece of equipment, and I see y'all got a lot of snow around here, and I'm going to come back one day, and I'm going I'm to I'm I'm do that for you. And I said, you going to do that? He just coming out the street. I mean, see, I got a word from the Lord. See, because if you ask for something, you're going to get something. All right. The Bible says, Jesus said, ask and it shall be given. How many thank God he told you to ask? Right. I didn't know I could ask. I, I didn't know I could ask for stuff. I thought I had to be content with what I had. I didn't know I could, you know something? I didn't know I could ask for me a house. I, I, I didn't know I could ask God to let me build a house from the ground. And I sleep in the house and nobody, everybody else built a house. I can't ask it for more. I run into people and say, oh, how you got this out? And the Lord gave it to me. I was in a, in a house man, had, he had me had a million dollar house. And we went there to say, a big, nice house. I found out he wasn't, he didn't really own it. He was renting it, but it was his while they rented it. <laughs> I have friends that, that <laughs> he brought back Barry Larkin's house. Big, nice house. Seven car garage, friend of mine. Some of the saints got mad and left the church, but he's still living in that house. I went by his house, he said to me when I got there, he said, pull your car up in that garage. That's your garage there. 
I got a garage in a friend's house. Then sometimes I ask, well, well what's my garage then? Now, I do have a garage at my house, amen? I don't have a car in every garage, but I do have it in my house. You ask God for stuff. People say, well, I, I don't ask God. I don't ask God. That's why you don't get nothing. You don't ask for nothing. If somebody tell me if Jesus, if God came down, Jesus came down, God, that means God came down, yes. robed himself in flesh, and he goes over and said, ask, yes. and it shall be given. Yes. Wonder why you don't ask for nothing. Why, why are you not asking for stuff? And sometimes when we ask, we ask too small. This is the doing season. I heard somebody on the, on the line, I think it was Sister Matthew, said this is the time. It's the doing season. It's due season, and it's time for us to do something. Ask God to help. It, it's time for us to look around and say, well, we need help. Ask God to help you. Ask the Savior to help you. We, this is the season to ask. Jesus said in the seventh day, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find not and the door shall be given. This is the season to ask God for wisdom. Wisdom that I had don't work for this. Tell your neighbor. Sometimes the wisdom that you had, that's why you, you need to ask you. A man likes wisdom. You need to ask God. That doesn't mean you don't have wisdom in something, but you don't have wisdom in all things. You don't know what to do at all times. Like when Moses got to the Red Sea, he didn't know all this stuff was going to happen when he got down there. But when he got there, the people started asking, why did you bring us out here to die? Was that not that grave down in Egypt? Why did we get out here? And, and Moses might have got this turf. And God said, stretch out the rod. Yeah. I mean, what, what am I going to do? Let's just, just stretch out the rod. Just, just take the rock that the thing you like. Well, I know it turns into a snake. I know it turns water into blood. But I didn't know it to divide the water. You have to understand. You have to ask God what you got in your hand. You don't know what you got in your hand. What you got in your mouth. What you got in your head. You don't know you need to ask God for wisdom how to use what you got. How do I use what I have? How do I use the resource that we have? What we're doing right now, we're asking God for the Lord. We, we got Facebook Live. We got the we got Zoom. We got, the, you know, sometimes it looks like sometimes stuff is not working, but we're not stopping because something is not working. Thank God for the saints. If it don't work, I thank God for the church. Well, I don't, they don't complain. They used to complain when they couldn't hear us. But they just have some patience and, and they learn how to wait on the Lord and, and they just hang in there with us. If you just hang in just for a little while longer, somewhere along the line, just hang in there. Don't, don't get so upset because it don't go the way it's supposed to go. We need to pray some more. Rather than complain some more, we need to learn how to pray some more. Lord, help them. They, they need help. Give them the help they need. I need, we, give them the wisdom they need. They in charge of stuff. Give them that. Ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. How do you deal with this? Sometimes I ask God for wisdom. Sometimes he said, just leave that alone. Leave that alone. You know, you be sitting back there, but I'm going to get in here. And I'm going to ask the Lord, now what should I do? Just leave it alone. Amen? Some stuff needs to be left alone. What should I say? Nothing. <laughs> we have to get right to the Holy Spirit said, nothing. Then what do you say? Nothing. That's the wisdom for the Holy Ghost. Nothing. Because if you say something with half the information, you won't know what's going on. That's right. Amen. You won't know what's going on. So you ask God for wisdom. Lord, what shall I do at this period of time? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody don't have wisdom for you. And people tell you, so well, God told me to tell you this. Maybe he did. But he didn't tell me yet. And he didn't confirm it when you said it. Now, if he said it to you, you just have to wait for patience for him to tell me. You know, you, the wisdom God gives us, 
the wisdom. I remember I shared this story different times when I was trying to get some money that belonged to me. God told me I had it. I asked him a question. I said, Lord, how am I going to go to school? I asked you, I asked you for a class that I can go through six months, be finished with the class. I got the class, but before I go in there, they said they had cut my funds. Where am I going to get the money from? He said, the same people go pay for it before. Don't pay for it now. I'm trying to inform him like he don't know. I said, Reagan said he cut off the phone. He said, who is you? Who is Reagan that you would question me? So what you need to do is just keep going. <laughs> Sometimes you may look like a fool going, but just keep going. And then just kept going and kept going until I think they got <laughs> They got tired of seeing me coming. <laughs> I think they did because they had the managers and take me down to the side and just kept going until the manager showed up and took me back to the book that was going to straighten stuff out. Don't be so careful to get upset with folk when God, when they come in there trying to tell you something. He was trying to be real polite. He was very professional. He's a young, intelligent man. And we want to make sure that you're not wasting your time. I said, sir, I'm not wasting my time. Hope I'm not wasting y'all time. But uh, I got word that I got money over here, and I'm here to get it. You get what I? He said, well, if I show you why we say you don't have no money in writing, will you believe me? I said, no good. But I still know I got some money in here. Something got to give. Tell you later, when God says something, something got to give. See, it's just to test of your faith. Something. You have to you know, get your wisdom up. There's something you got to get. It doesn't sound like what it's supposed to sound like, but something got to get. I've been praying, so something got to get. I've been doing, so something got to get. I've been sowing, so something got to get. Something got to get. My wisdom is something. You got to keep on keeping on till something gets. With a woman that went to that judge, and he was a, a guy, he was a rough guy. But he saw her, she was determined. You got to have a determination in your spirit. This is the season but you got to be determined, and you got to know that something got to give. I, I'm praying to us, I'm living. You don't know how you're living. I am a child of God. I watch my robe in the cliff, and I am a child, and something got to give. Something got to happen. Some way got to make one. I can't see no way, but God will make a way even if I don't see. Go ask God for some wisdom. We had, we had some stuff. I told you about that story. The end of the story was the man let me read. I don't know if they accept Claude was in there before. I don't even know if the sentence was there. We, you heard that song that I didn't do no right, but my name is there. God will put you on the program. <laughs> he can write stuff in. That was there before. Well, have you ever been place and you in a place by yourself? And all of a sudden, Elijah was in a place like this. He was in a cave. And guess what? The raven showed up. <laughs> God made a filthy bird bring him his dinner. So God said it, it's got to be clean. God cleaned up that raven and called that raven. He wasn't even considered to be a clean bird. God called that dirty bird to pick some food. I don't know what table he went. He might have went by the king's table and grabbed him a piece of meat and went back and grabbed a piece of bread and took it to the cave where the man of God. God has a way of getting you your stuff. If you just wait on the Lord, he knows how to get you where you need 
the thing. And the Bible said in the scripture that when the brook dried up and the bird didn't come, God said, I commanded the widow woman yes, to take care of you. And when you find her, she's going to take care of you. And when he saw the widow woman, the widow woman didn't have nothing. Yes, How's she going to take care of me? And she got here with sticks and dried and got but a little more meal and, and she hoping to die. Yes, but the man of God looked it in the face. It's in the season not to be distracted by what you hear, not to be distracted by what you see. Ask God for some wisdom. For me, I ain't going to take your last. Lord, help me. Help me to figure out how I'm going to feed the widow woman and her son. No, you need some help right now. I commanded her to help you. How many believe that God can command people they help you that don't look like they can help you. You don't know how they will help you. These are wisdom. Ask for wisdom. Amen. Not to question God. Amen. Don't question him about his plan. Ask for guidance. Ask for help. Ask for deliverance. Bible talks about when the enemy comes in as a flood. When the enemy comes in. I remember times that was, the enemy was trying to get me. They were trying to fire me. And I knew it. You've been in a place where they want to fire you. And I knew they wanted to fire me. I don't know why they wanted to fire me, but they didn't like me. I don't know why they didn't like me. I mean, you, you don't have to know why people don't like you. But they didn't, the Bible said, you're going to be hated of all nations for my name's sake. They, they didn't like me because a man told me, said, I, I'd rather have a drunk for a friend than you. He told me one day, they told me to help me. He said, I ain't going to help you. I'm going to let you know I'm not going to help you. And, and, and don't even ask me. Even if I go out there, I'm not going to help you. So I might as well just sit in my seat because I'm not going to help you because I don't like you. And I got a job. I got family to feed. Now, Lord, what should I do? My thought was to tell him off. I'm a human too. <laughs> and uh, I heard the Holy Ghost say, walk in the spirit. And you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's wisdom. Stop walking in the flesh. Walk on another level in the spirit. When I got that from it, so now I'm walking in the spirit now. And I went out there, the people on the job said, we ain't going to help you. Everybody said, we ain't going to help. I, don't even ask for it. Don't even look for it. We are not going to help you. I ain't did nothing to these people. They were mad at me because God had answered a prayer for me. See, but when the, God answered your prayer, the devil going to get mad. And you're going to wish you didn't pray that prayer. Scare you. I'm, I'm going to stand uh, now. You pray that prayer. God bless you. Now, okay, you got it now. We're going to see how you enjoy it. I would do everything I can to make you miserable. So I went through a miserable day. Went through a miserable day. People said, man ran all kinds of scrap. People lied on me. Friends lied on me. I thought I had some friends at work. I had to find out what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> I thought I had somebody to talk for me. They got in the room and they sit there while I'm sitting there and lie. It's one thing for people to lie behind your back. But it's another thing when people lie in front of your face. And I'm seeing this, this thing. And I thought about the assistant plant manager, Gary Blevin, came down to my department. And he just started raising his voice. The same day. I'm talking about, I had an awful, y'all ain't never had an awful day. Uh, just the same day. And, and then I touched him. I said, sir, I can hear you don't have to holler at me. You don't have to holler at me. I can hear. I'll take care of all of you. He knew that I just got in the apartment and he's taking me through it, asking me questions. And the man in the office won't tell me nothing. So I had to go through. The people in the department said they ain't gonna tell me nothing. So they, they, they actually got to the point, they were not telling me anything. I said, sir, I'm gonna find out when it's over. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take care of all of you. I just said, I will take care of all of you. 
you have to talk to me like that. I went on that night, I was so scared, I'll tell you about that. I was stopped, and the devil started working with my mind. Now you know, you human, they lied on Jesus, they crucified him. Yeah, they crucified him, yeah. And you're not immune to the, the people doing stuff to you. And I just kept hearing that. And I would sit there, and so I was laying in my bed, and I was so petrified, I started trembling in my bed. I was, see, I was trying to tremble. I was just trembling. I'm thinking in my mind, these people are going to try to get rid of them. They're going to try to get rid of them. I was, I was thinking like that. And I heard the Lord say, Holy oh, Spirit came in and said, I'm not giving you the Spirit. song in my heart. You ever had the Holy Ghost put a song in your heart? And I just started saying, I'm on the winning side. I'm on the winning side. I'm on the winning side with Jesus. I may be afraid. My soul can only say, I'm on the winning side with Jesus. That song going down the aisle of People came up to me and they looked at me. They were working, so they they came up to me and they said, uh, they said they said he's crazy. They looked at me. I wasn't talking to them the day before. They were talking to them. I, I, I told them the day before. I said, now y'all don't tell me what y'all everything y'all had to say, but don't you stop overseas until it's time. Don't take extra breaks. Don't take extra lunch. And I took a little pad. Paper and everything they would do, I just write it down. They said, What you doing? I'm writing down what you, what you doing. My boss, my boss didn't like it. The man I worked for, he didn't like it. I wrote down everything he said. What you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm taking notes of everything you say. He came up in my apartment and talked to somebody and, and got them off point on their job. He even got a sign for I wrote that down. I say, if I fail today, it, I'm going to put it in there. The reason why I didn't get my production today, you interfere with my production. I had, by the end of the day, I left there that, that day, and I had fear. Did you ever see God turn fear around? I walked in, my boss was scared. <laughs> the people who were working with me, they were scared to stop working. They, they were they said, can we stop? I purposely let them work too minutes past the time quick. Got more production that day than they ever got that day. I said, get mad again. Tell me you ain't gonna do something again. We turned that thing around. We took care of all the problems because greater is in us than he is in the world. So I, that, at first I was intimidated. I'm, I'm not uh, super sweet. I'm nothing super sweet. You know, I, we, we, we strong until the Lord, we was weak until the Lord showed up. We tell people about our strength. I've seen people, when I, when I got that, I wasn't scared. Brother, you were scared when, <laughs> when you told me about it. Be honest. You want to, this is with us, be honest. If you are afraid at some point in time, he's not giving the feel, spirit of fear, but you can be afraid sometime. Amen? You can be afraid. We have to ask for guidance. We have to ask for provision. The people said they were going to help me. God caused people from other departments to come into my department, wasn't on my payroll, to help me. The Bible says he's a very present help in the time of trouble. 
one man asked his man, why are you over in that department trying to help him? He says, it's none of your business. I just want to go in and help the man. He needs some help. And I went over there to help him. Let me try to stop your help. Why are you helping them? Don't let the devil stop you from helping. Because that's it. There are people that don't want to help and they want to stop you from helping. Don't let people stop you from doing what you do. You just keep on doing what you're doing. Amen? See, these people are in the, the word, the word. Uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was God. Grace and truth. You got grace and truth working in your faith. I'll tell you that. Grace and truth is working in your faith. Ask for provision. Ask for what is already yours. Ask questions. Ask questions of God. Lord, what's going on? Then wait on the answer. People don't know what to do right now. People do not know what to do. I remember there was a crisis in Hamilton, Ohio. The people in the NAACP, some young man was riding down the sidewalk. Racism had not gone away. Riding down the sidewalk on his bicycle, on the sidewalk, which is a public space, a man came off his porch and shot the boy dead right there in Hamilton. And people asked the question of me, uh, what can we do? And, and I said, I don't know. The person who was in charge of the NAACP in Hamilton found out that I was at one of the saints' houses and he came over, somebody called, said, Pastor Perkins is here in this place. He came over and I said, can you come over? Maybe you want to come over and talk to him. So when he got there, I told him, man, I don't know what to do. He said, what? I don't know what to do. Well, let's, uh, let's ask God. When you ask God a question, listen for the answer. Let's sit here, and if he say something, we'll say something to you. So we prayed, and so we sit there. Hmm? Ask up, no, it ain't coming yet. Ask up, no, it hadn't got here yet. Then finally, it came. When you go out there and you talk about this, I told him the exact words to say. And he said those exact words. He said exactly what I said on it. But he didn't say Pastor Perkins said that. And I wasn't disturbed because he didn't say I said it. God said what he wanted to say to me. He didn't say it from me. He said it through me. And sometimes you will get a word from me through me. And it won't be just for me. It'll be for you from him. Amen. And you be asking, well, you said that and that blessed me. That was him blessing you through me. How many understand? You have to have wisdom to understand. Oh, you, oh, I, I go back and listen to the own, my own, the message and see what the Lord has said to us through me. Amen. Ask for what is already yours. Ask there's something God already has for you. You just have to ask for it. It's just there. I'm just waiting for you to ask. I remember a time I needed some money. I needed $4,000. I thought I needed it. I called a person to get the $4,000. And uh, I said, can I borrow $4,000? They said, uh, sure, when you need it. I said, I need it. By, as soon as you get it, well, I'll send it tomorrow. I said, okay. I ain't never asked nobody for four thousand dollars, and they didn't ask me when I was gonna pay. I said, "Well, I'll pay you back a uh, certain time." It ended up I didn't need the four thousand dollars. I didn't need the four thousand dollars. That's what I left here. <laughs> I didn't need the four thousand dollars. But when I found out that they needed, so I took it. I said, "I'm gonna send that money back." They said, "Well, you don't need to send it back." I had it already here for you. I wanted to give it to you anyway. I said, you want to give it to me? He said, yeah, I had put it in my mind. It came in my mind to give you $4,000. Mm. And I said, well, 
I don't need it now, he's to, but, but it's yours. It, it, it's yours. And you, you don't have to give it back. I just go, thank you, Jesus. See, sometimes people sow. You, you know how you sow and just keep sowing. You don't seem like nothing is happening. And I gave and I gave and nothing. Don't believe that. When God started opening up the windows of heaven and pouring me out blessings that I didn't have room to receive, I didn't know what was going on. It scared me. It, it came so fast, it scared me. But I had a period of time of consistent sowing, giving to the Lord, giving to it, giving not only a tithe, but giving him an offering. When I didn't have nothing, I gave to the Lord. I gave. I heard people say they gave their way out of problems. They gave their way out of situations. They gave their way out of circumstances. I was able to do that. And you got to get over the window of heaven and open up doors and money start falling. And people that owe me paid me back. All kinds of stuff started happening. It all started happening for us. Gave it to us. When all of this happened for us, I was thanking God. Yeah. One day I got a check for $700. Didn't know why I got it. Don't know the sender. But I called. It was a valid check from an account, unknown account, for $700. I said, Lord, what is that for? He said, that's for somebody else. I said, somebody else? You sent it to me with my name on it. He said, yeah, but it's for somebody else. God had blessed me so much. I just reached up on, I reached up on an account one day. It scared me. And money fell off the account, off the shelf. I had $1,400 filled right in front of my face. I said, Lord, where it came from? Right now, I tell people, I used to tell people in Hamilton, God can supply your need. I used to look in my pockets, find money. I find money on the street. I've been walking to the mall. I see money in there. I go to the mall one day, on the floor. I'm way out of the pocket. That looks like money in there. And everybody walked to the money, moved over here, moved over there, walked right in there. And laying on that floor was a fifty dollar bill. I picked it up. Wow. Lord, thank you. All those people passed right by. But what somebody told me something? What God has for me? It's for me. He won't let nobody see it. What's for me? It's for me. And what God got for you is for you. Yeah. So ask for what belongs to you. Ask him for your portion. The Lord is my portion. I just asked for it. Seek the face of the Lord. Seek the face of the Lord. Seek the face. We want to be in other folks' face. Be in the face of God. Seek the face of the Lord. Seek the face of the Lord. Act like you are in his face. And he's looking right at you and you're looking right at him. Seek to know his will for your life. Everybody got a will for you. You seek to know his will for your life. Seek his word. Seek the Lord and his strength. Lord, I need your strength now. Yeah. Mine is gone out. I need your strength. Now, I remember time I was so tired. I was in a revival. I was working seven days a week, 12 hours a day wow. in and he got up at 2.30 in the morning to work 12 hours a day, working for Ford Motor Company, and I was in the revival in Columbus, which was an hour and a half away. I had a brother who could drive, drive his family didn't trust his driving, but I did. They said, Pastor, we prayed for you because I, <laughs> my daddy, he can't drive too well at night. But he drove me up one day. I was just laying over there. I was so tired. I just laid there on the side. I was just so tired. I was, I would get to the church. I was tired. And I preached that night. And in the middle of preaching, I felt the strength. In the middle of preaching, I felt the Lord show up in the preaching. And when I got through preaching, I was not tired. I was energized. I like I was on fire. I was on cloud nine. And 
sometimes I don't come down off of it for a while. Sometimes I'll be so drained when it go. I just sit in the gym. Sometimes I'll be so high up in the spirit. I'll be trying to figure out something else to do. That word, and I went home and got up early the next morning. I drove back home myself. Got to that early that morning and went to work. Worked all day and rested that evening and went back that next day and preached again. And God showed up every time. Every time I set up in here, I know always that God show. I seek his strength. Lord, I need your strength right now. When I get discouraged, I just seek his strength. I, when I don't have no encouragement, I just seek his strength. When you don't have anybody that's, you know, it's like, well, why, why the hell it? I just seek his strength. Sometimes we seek other folks' strength, but we have to seek his strength. I thank God for my wife beside me. Amen. She's a worker, work holic. Amen. I would say she works hard at home. She works hard in here. She said, you should be saying that to people. She, be upset. Uh, she don't want me to say this, but I say this anyway. It's true. She don't want, when I say this, she, don't say that because they be looking at me. I said, I don't care how they look at you. It's true. I pray the, pray the bridge that you cross. Amen. And you better feed the horse you ride. <laughs> That's wisdom, ain't that right? I'm trying to tell people to encourage you. You got a wife, encourage you. Amen. You got a friend, encourage you. Amen. That's wisdom. Encourage you. Ask God. How can I encourage him? How can I be a blessing to him? How can I encourage somebody else? If you want to be encouraged, encourage somebody else. If you get to the place, but I'm so discouraged, just get up and go find somebody to encourage. Get up and go find somebody to pray for. Get up and go find somebody to help. You will be blessed in the midst of it. And you'll forget about your problem when you help other folks with their problem. And the Lord will give you that strength that you need to help other folks and recover yourself. This is the season to knock. Knock on doors. Said I knocked on doors. I knocked on doors. And nobody answered the door. I knocked on doors. People said I called. And nobody answered the phone. I called. And nobody answered the phone. I have a person that's in prison now. He said, he be telling people, when I call you and you didn't answer the phone, I my cell phone, my cell phone, sometimes I be on a, on, a, on a call. You can't answer a call on an important call, and everybody else is important too. And people say, well, you don't answer your phone, but just keep calling. If you need me, keep calling. The Bible, if you need God, keep asking. Keep knocking, keep knocking. God will say, if you need something, keep asking for it. You don't ask for it, people think you don't need it no more. Knock on heaven doors, Lord. I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither have it in the heart of it. All the good things you have for me. So I need you to open the door. Sometimes I get locked up in the, in the garage. I go out in the garage without a key. It's okay in the summertime. Ruby makes sure when she's outside and I'm finna go. She makes sure she go back in the house so I don't lock out. <laughs> because if I'm gone, she knows ain't nobody home. You can knock on the door all day. If me and her in the house and ain't nobody in, and, I, and she know I left, she know I ain't at home. So sometimes she had to go, one time she had to go somewhere else and wait till, till I came back home. Right? Why? Why? Because if you're not going to do it, nobody's home. You're not going to get in there. But there's a door that you're going to knock on. And you know God is on the other side of the door. He can open that door. I have gone, I've been in the church here and locked myself out of the office. The, the, the secretary's office is closed. I can go in there. I can so I'm out of here. And if you don't know your surrounding, I figured out how to call from them phones out there. But I said, Lord, I need to, I need to get in this door. I don't need to disturb nobody because they got to come over here. And I heard the Lord said, pull the door. I just pulled the door. The door came on. It was locked, but it came on. 
Did he open it? Or was it left open? Was it left in the open position for me? No, it couldn't have been because when I pulled on it before, it was locked. But if you ask for the Lord to help you to get out of your situation, he always helps. Sometimes when you're by yourself, you need to wait until God helps you and quit waiting on the other people to help you because he's a very present help in a time of trouble. And when you get in trouble, you can count on God every time I've needed him. He's always been there. Because he's the word. He's the word you need. What am I supposed to say? Wait until he give you word. What am I supposed to say in this situation? What has helped me so much in my marriage for 48 years? Is ask God what I'm going to say now. We had some rocky roads early. Because <laughs> I was trying to do it by myself. But when I asked the Lord to help me, he said, read my word. Be kind to the Lord. Tender heart. Treat her right. You know the best way to get a woman to act right is treat her right. <laughs> the best way to get people to act right is to treat them right. Just love them. They may not want to do what they're doing for you, but because they know you love them, they'll do it. Because I know they love me. They, they, they love me here. I do this because there are some things people won't do for people if they don't feel that that person loves them. They just won't do it. They feel like I'm wasting my time. But when people love you and they know you love them, they go out of the way to help you. What can I do to help you? So what, the, what this wisdom I'm trying to talk about now, this word that I'm trying to give you today, if it's not working right, don't work on the other person, work on yourself. We had a period of fasting and praying. That's one of the things we have before the Lord. I thank God for all of you that are here today. But fasting is serious to me. It can't be about the bread that we eat. It can't be about the food that we eat. It can't be about those things. It has to be about him. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Sometimes, if he says he's going to be here in this atmosphere, just believe he's here. He knows where you are. He knows your heart. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're feeling. He knows what's happening to you. And he can help you. Keep knocking on this door. Can I come in? I want to talk with you. I need to tell you about my troubles. I need to tell him all about my troubles. I need to tell you about my trials. I need to. I mean, he's gonna give you personal care. He's he's like the uh, psychiatry that's like none other. He'll listen to you. Amen. I thank God about Jesus when he came into the world. And one of the things that he did, the first thing he did when he was 12 years of age, he went into the temple where the doctors and, and the lawyers were. And he listened. First thing he did was listen. Then he asked he listened so he know the question to ask. He listened. So some of us, we need to listen to God's word so we know the question that we ask. Remember when the brother had, they told him he got a word from the prophet. The prophet said to him, set your house in order. As a guy said, but you should have died. He went to the Lord and said, you know I'm going before you. Got the news from the man of God, but you know I'm going before you. No other man's word is a final word until you get the word of God. So the word that God gave the prophet to give Hezekiah. Isaiah, when he was walking out, 
God gave him another word. Go back and tell Hezekiah. I'm adding 15 years to his life. What would have happened if Hezekiah had gone to God? Don't settle from going to your high spiritual person and they tell you, make sure you understand that you have access to God, your father. He may have decided to, to tell somebody to tell you something, but you go back and find out and, and you talk to God about it. They tell you that, talk to God about it. No, don't talk to yourself. Don't talk to your friend. Talk to God about it. If Hezekiah could turn his face to the wall, and sometimes when we turn our face to the wall, you know, sometimes the Lord about, you know, sometimes you go, Lord, have I done anything that I shouldn't have done? That I don't that, that I'm but sometimes we blind to our our own faults. We blind to our own errors. We blind to that. We can see everybody else's, but we don't see ourselves. And sometimes when you stand before the, the judgment, you stand before God, you stand before the mirror, you're looking in the word, and sometimes you'll see yourself in the word. Sometimes a preacher be preaching and you'll see yourself in the message. You will see yourself. And once you behold yourself in the mirror, ask God to help you make the adjustments that need to be made. Sometimes when you're in the mirror, looking in the mirror and seeing yourself, are you asking enough? Are you seeking enough? Are you knocking enough? How are you not to pray? Lord, I asked you yesterday, I asked you before, just keep on knocking. People said, sometimes they'll say, well, I, when I asked him one time, I just quit. There's nowhere in the Bible that says for you to quit. The story Jesus tells us that about the woman tells us that because she would continue to come, if the king changed his mind, He said, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how shall not God give good things to the people that ask? One writer said, we have not because we ask not. And when we ask, that means be specific. You want a specific answer from God. Somebody said, well, I asked him, did he say no? No, he didn't say no. He didn't say yes either, but he didn't say no. Long as he don't say no, <laughs> you're okay. As long as he don't say no, I asked him, he ain't moved yet, but long as he didn't say no. And sometimes he'll tell you why. He said, I talked about his grace is sufficient for him. He told him that, well, he knew about grace. He knew about favor because he had it. He taught it. But if he had to ask God those three times, and the third time God said to him, I want you to know my grace is sufficient for you. This is the person who would ask God to do stuff, and he probably saw God answer it. There are some times that you ask God for stuff, and you see God answer it. There are other times you ask it. It seems like it's a delay. Sometimes God says, you got all you need. <laughs> all you need from me, you got it. My grace is sufficient. My grace. I, I can see him say, Mom, well, that's wonderful. Your grace, that, that, that's good news to me. My grace, your grace, is, you can make it. I've never been time, I thought I couldn't make it. How many of you have ever been in a place, I thought I couldn't make it? I thought I was at the end. I thought... I, I, I'm broke, don't have no money. I thought I was at the end. Thought I couldn't make it. How am I going to make it? And God opens up a door. I'm going to make it. One time I was calling somebody, I tell you all these things. I'm sharing this with you because so you get to this place, you need some wisdom and you need some knowledge, and sometimes you need some money. Don't be afraid to ask God for some money. 
I don't know where it's coming from. Lord, I need some money. How much money do you need? I need, tell them exactly what you need. I need this amount of money. Because I'm trying to pay this. Now, he can tell you if you don't need it or not. I remember one time I asked my uncle, I said, well, now you wouldn't ask people. Hard for me to ask people for something. I said, no. I'm going to need to get some money from you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what you need? Whatever you can spare. I needed more than what he can spare, but what he got. He didn't know how to spare money. <laughs> but I had some favor with him. You know what he said? He said, he got a, he's an older guy. You know, he got a body. And he walked into the room, went back, probably went in his drawer and got some money out. That's what it, I, I knew he kept his money. I couldn't go in the drawer, but I could ask him. And he can go in the drawer and get it. He came out. And while he was in the process of going to get it and come back, the Lord said, I made you the head and not the tail. You should loan the many nation and not the power. You know, sometimes you don't want that. The word he gives you is not the one you want to hear right now. Whatever he's bringing me is going to help me. He came out of the room with a $100 bill. And I looked at it. I needed that. I'm like, no, I don't need it. Now, Ruby didn't know we were broke. I don't know if she might have had an inkling that we were broke, but she didn't know. I had spent my last time. That meant that I had to trust what God is thinking. I said, what he said to me, he said, wait on me. Next day, I went to the mailbox, looked in the mailbox, that was a letter from Forbes. I said, what they calling me for? You got a check left out at Ford Motor Company. You need to come and get it. Well, I've got all the money for a check. I called Ford, they said, yeah, we got a check here for you. Went back out there, I said, well, you got a check for me? He said, yes. Uh, it's, you got laid off from Fords. You were laid off from salary, you went back to hourly. But see, when you go from hourly, from salary to hourly, if you get laid off, you get separate pay. I said, get separate pay. So yeah, you get separate pay, and your pay is $8,000. From zero to $8,000. I said, how did this happen? Well, we will check it out, folks. And we find out you are the only person that qualified to get this money. And what we've done, we've taken some of the TRA out of it. So your balance is $8,000. You talking about somebody that learned how to lean and to pin and to trust the guy till you get to the wits end and didn't have, got to the end. Your end is not his end. Your thoughts are not his thoughts. Our ways are not his ways. So high above our way is his way. What we thinking about don't matter. It's what he thinks. What we say don't matter. It's what he say. What they say don't matter. It's what he said. It's what God says the Lord. If he said it, I believe it. And that's enough for me. If you believe it, if you trust it, if you trust it. I know some of the stuff I tell you. I don't believe that. I've been in stuff. I don't believe this happened. But then I started saying, what a mighty God we got. Reigning now above. On the throne of love. What a mighty God we serve. Not only that, I want you to understand it. He's not only my God. He's your God. He's our God. And my God just apply my need, and your God just apply your need according to the riches and glory in Christ. Jesus. You just need to learn how to trust Him. Put your trust in the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Don't worry about this stuff. What's 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 going to happen? What's going to happen now? It's in my office on New Year's Eve, sitting in. Of sitting in the chair. 
I heard, I heard the phone ring, and, and by the time I got the phone, uh, there was nobody on the phone. And I got up the step, heard it ring again, and I went on up the steps and sit in the chair. I was sitting in the chair. Uh, two minutes later, Sister Joyce Garrett came up the steps to the door. She says, that's some money that somebody dropped off. I'm bringing it up here to you and see uh, what you want to do. And I basically took it and put it in the, in the, in the safe. But they had dropped off $750 for this church. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I said, Lord, thank you. And I called the brother and, and I asked him, I said, thank you for to bringing that deposit to us. Uh, and he's been doing it every year since I've been here. He said to me, he says, Pastor Perkin, I passed by and I see you trying to help the community. I see the people can come over there and get shots and they can come over there and get tested. And I see that you feed people. I knew it in the area and trying to help the people and I'm trying to help you. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. God is such an amazing God. Just such an amazing. He opened doors that we cannot see. Things he does. He always does. He's always doing great things. He's always opening doors. He's always making ways. He's always doing those things. Trust him in the truth. Understand who you are. Believe that you're a child of God. Ask according to his word. Seek according to his word. And now, there's some doors. I'll be knocking on. There's some things behind the door. What's behind your door? Tell your name, what's behind your door? If you got a door to knock on, what's behind your door? I'm amazed to see what's behind the door for us right here in 2022. What's behind? I don't know about you, but I'm going to be asking. I'm going to be seeking. And I'm going to be knocking. And I advise you to do the same thing. God has been so I am just, I thank God for being blessed. I've been blessed so much. I want everybody to be blessed. <laughs> How many know that God got enough blessings to go around? God got enough blessings. I'll knock on your door for you. I'll knock with you. I'll pray with you. But make sure you pray yourself. You have a personal relationship with God. That's why Jesus came to you. You can have a personal relationship. It's amazing what it would have been like to have been Peter in the middle of a storm with Jesus. It's amazing what it would have been like when they watched leprous people be healed. It's amazing what it would have been like when they saw the lightning ball and people receive it sight again. But it was also amazing when Jesus turned to them and said, I'm leaving you now, but I'm going to give you power to do the same thing that I do. And it worked. same shall you do. And greater works than these shall you do. Because I go to the Father. Isn't that an amazing way to live? To know that God has not limited us to our past. God has not limited us to our presence. But God is going to be there for us in our future. I'm standing on the promise of God. I'm standing on his word. I'm standing on his word that he's given me in my life. I am Standing on his prayer, pray. He prayed for us in the 17th chapter of St. John. He prayed for us to make us one as he and the Father is one. He prayed for us to keep us from evil. And I believe that God is able to keep us in the midst of all this. He's able to heal us when we get sick. He's able to raise us up when we're down. He's able to do that. I thank God for that. But also, I'm enjoying his presence. This is the season to enjoy the presence of the Lord. Sometimes, just invite him in the room. Give him an invitation, Lord, when you come in the room. Holy Spirit, when you come in the room. Father, when you just come in the room. I want to fellowship with you in this room. 
And sometimes when I get into that place, remember Pastor Wild used to say that when a lady used to stay upstairs in the house where we were at, and she would be up there all by herself. And she would just be praising God and going back and forth, praising God and praising God. And, and, and so much so that the people downstairs could hear her pray. I remember a mother named Mother Jackson. She turned to be 106 years old before she died. And I would go through her house. The people on the outside of the room would be smoking weed. I could smell it. And they would set it down when I came in to visit mother. But I walked into her room. Her room was saturated with the presence and the glory of God. So much so, so much power in that room that my I could feel my hair stand up on my head. And mother would pray to God. And she would pray to God. My hair was stand up. On, it, it, I said, Lord, how can you do this? You have to find your sleeping place, a place to be alone with God. She had found a place in the midst of all of the other mess that was going on, the messed up children, messed up grandchildren, all around But she was a mother of prayer. I never forget that. She told me, she said, Pastor, I pray. And I pray. And things get worse. She was just talking to me, and I said, as a mother, but I ask a lot of questions. What do you do when things get worse when you keep on praying? She gave me a stern look. She looked up in my eyes and she said, Pastor, what do you think I do? I just keep on praying. So I'm going to tell you something. When things get worse for you, keep on praying. Or something will happen. Why don't you stand here with your feet? I pray this word has ministered to somebody that you get a word from the word today. If your word is asked, God, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face. Knock on the doors. And the doors are open for you. Something that's been closed going to be open to you. Don't give up. Keep on knocking. Keep knocking on the door of heaven. Keep knocking at the Lord's door. Keep knocking. Keep knocking because you want access into the thing that God wants you to have. If you're here today and you're not saved, you want to invite Jesus to come in your life. This is a great opportunity to be here. We thank God for you, for blessing us with your presence. And being in his presence, I believe the Lord is here. He's in this atmosphere right now. The time to ask is right now. What you need from the Lord, ask him now. You said, I've asked it before. This is the asking season. This is the asking season. This is the seeking season. This is the knocking season. Year 20. 22 is the asking, seeking, knocking season. If you ask, it shall be given. You seek, you shall find, and you knock, and the door will be opened. According to your faith, be it unto you. Can you receive it? Do you believe it? Do you believe the word of God? Can you receive it for yourself? If you're here today and you need something special, you can come and stand in this altar at this point in time. I pray that you would let our Facebook land and those that are what listen by Facebook land, whatever I ask, you need to ask for your healing. Ask for your deliverance. Ask for the change that you need in your life. Ask him now. It's now time. It's the now time. It's, it's the season to ask. It's the season to seek. It's the season to knock and the door be open to you. If you're here today, God has spoken to you today. Time to ask is now. Time to see is now. The day you hear his voice, harden. It's not 
just to hear the word and bless. Someone said, I was blessed by the word, but it's an action word. Word had become flesh and dwell among us. We have two or three of the siblings that are together, even in the midst. And we're around the altar today, and God is here. He's in the midst of us. And while you're in his presence, while it's now, right now, at this particular moment, make your request known to God. God, you see who I am. You see why I am. You know what I need. I'm being specific with you right now. For I ask, Lord, for help. I ask for souls to be saved. I ask for healing. I ask, Lord God, that you raise this sickness up off the land. You said in your word, if my people who are called by my name will honor themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. Thirdly, they shall be afraid. I forgive your sins. Heal the land. They will be filled. If you need to repent today, Lord, I repent for not asking. I repent for not seeing. I repent for not knocking. I repent for not doing what I need to do. I accept by faith. Everything you have for me. If you're here today and you need to be saved, if you're out there today and you need to be saved, why don't you ask the Lord to forgive you? Why don't you repent? Say, Lord, I need a change in my life. I want to change my life. I want to change the things that I'm doing. Why don't you ask God to forgive you today? If you confess your sin, He's faithful and just and forgive your sin. And to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you're a sinner today, God loves you today. He not mad at you. He loves you. God sent Jesus because he loves us. He didn't send him to condemn us. He sent him because he loves us. Jesus is here. The day of vengeance has passed. Now grace is available to you. Now grace is available to you. Now truth is is available to you. Receive the grace. Receive the truth. Our vengeance is past. Vengeance. Vengeance he will repay. But not today. Now he called everyone everywhere to repent. While you have a chance. Ask God to forgive you. He loves you. He wants you to be saved. Peter said he's not willing that any should perish. But all come to repentance. He wants people to repent. He's not interested in killing folk. He's interested in people coming to repentance. Amen. No, I didn't need the Lord. If I ever need the Lord, I sure need him now. I pray that all of you made that decision to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of life. If you did, call and let us know. Give us a card, drop by. Find yourself a, a, a group of people that love the Lord so you can have fellowship with them and fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Believe it. And he's going to do what we ask him to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Today, God bless you. Thank God we we have a young lady that we met downstairs named Jalise and her family. It's good to have you here with us today. Amen. She uh, works downstairs and she's here in service with us today. And we thank God for her being here today with us. Thank God for all of you being here. You know, God is moved by me. I pray you be blessed. Did you all get blessed by anything I said today? Absolutely. Amen. Blessed by I know that God is faithful. What he does to one, he'll do for another. Good to see you, Brother Mactia. See, I'm holding on and looking up. Amen. Thank God. We're going to go into our communion service today. Amen. We thank God. Brother Andre has been under the weather. Uh, somebody at his job had contacted uh, COVID-19. He had some symptoms, but we believe in God that he's going to raise him 
back up. Sister Deborah doesn't have any symptoms. We thank God for that. But that's probably the reason why they're not here today. Uh, one of the reasons they're not here today. But we want to lift them up in prayer. The Bible says pray one for another. How many know your prayers work? Your prayers count. We thank God for you today. Thank God. Amen. For all of you. Love you very much. Amen. I pray for you every day. That God will continue to bless you. And he is faithful. Amen. In everything he does. And I thank him for that. We're going to ask uh, Brother Wesley and
us as the body of Christ. That we take in it and eat this. Remember the body that was broken for us. And with his stripes we are healed. Log in at 11.50 a.m. so that we can 
meet and greet one another, and prayer begins from 12 to 1 p.m. The conference call number is 701-802-5119. The access code is 502-8602. We'd like to thank each and every one who participated with us um, in the Lord's Supper. Whether you're at home or not, we thank you for participating and may God bless you. We are continuing to offer vaccines, COVID-19 vaccines, and the booster here at Southwestern Church of God, along with testing. Monday, Wednesday, and Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. If you have any questions regarding the vaccines or meeting times for our classes and, and prayer, please call 313-386-7960. This is an exciting time to at least be able to offer things that people are not um, used to having or are, are, are accustomed to having it available during this time because of all the COVID. But Perry Outreach is offering computer classes. If you're interested in participating and learning how to use the computer, their classes will begin in January and will be announced at a later date. For for Computer 100, which is for beginners, and Computer 200, which, are, which is for experienced students, more information will be coming in the coming weeks. And if you have any questions regarding that, please contact Sister Marjorie Maynard, the Secretary. I assume no a babysitter has not been selected as of yet for a four-year-old, a precious four-year-old that needs a babysitter. The mother's name is Doris Ray, and she is a prayer partner to Reverend Cecil Mickens. Please contact him if you're able to fulfill that task. There will also be free instrumental music programs for youth ages eight to 15, coming on Saturdays in January. And that will be, music is a universal language. Numerous studies have shown it enhances focus and improves mental health while promoting healing and connection of people from various cultures. Applications are being taken and classes are taught by professional, caring, and nurturing musicians. The times to be held is from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. at St. Andrew Benedict Church, 2430 South Beatrice. It is sponsored by the Perry Outreach Center in partnership with Marathon Petroleum Oil Company. Other partners include Southwestern Church of God, Our Place of Peace Community Garden. The Times and I mean, the, the uh, change of times or exact dates will be given at a later date. But you can call to put your name on the list at 313-749-7324 or 919-302-1247. Thank God for his blessings. Thank God for each and every one of you being here today. And we'd like to extend prayer to the bereaved, sick and shut in. We are continually praying for you each and every day. We encourage you to keep praying, toiling on. There soon will dawn a brighter day. Until then, encourage one another, love one another, and stay well. God bless you.
Sister Ruby Carter's brother passed today. Brother Carter went home, prayed for the family, prayed for us, prayed for them. They got in touch too. Uh, Pastor Hill just asked for prayer for his uh, granddaughter, uh, Tanisha. That's her name, Tanisha. Yes, she came down with uh, COVID also. Pray for her that God would raise her up again and continue to pray one for another. Amen. This thing is real. We thank God for all of our help, the musicians, the people that are working with the sound. We're still working on the live stream. We have not gotten it yet, but we're going to thank God for all the urchins and everybody that's here that helps us do anything. We thank God for you. Appreciate your tithes and offerings, your giving by giving fi and through your regular tithes and offerings. And we thank God for you and just continue to pray for us. We're looking forward to this year, amen. amen. This is our season to ask. This is our season to seek. This is our season to knock. And I believe if we do what we are told to do, we're going to see results like we've never seen before. How can we believe that today? Amen. Amen. And God bless you that prayer. At this time, we ask Pastor Hill to come and dismiss us in prayer uh, today. Amen. We thank God for him. Amen. Uh, we are to uh, have a celebration for him along with uh, others who have worked here with us. You get more information about that. They're no longer able to function uh, past the end of this retirement because they, they feel as the Lord has uh, told them to do that. But he's still going to be active here working with us uh, as our pastor emeritus. So. Thank God for that, and uh, we pray that we pray for me, amen, for wisdom, and as we do this fast, amen, we know that we get some examples from the Daniel fast. Some people told me that last year that they would fast different uh, times of day. They would fast, uh, leave out a meal, they would fast until the evening meal, or whatever way you want to do it. I said, make it your fast. If you want to do the Daniel, it's like what Daniel prescribed about all fruits and vegetables, do that. But we need to fast and pray, saints, and seek the Lord for wisdom, for we need it. We need help right now with this disease, amen? We need help in this church, amen, where we can all be able to come and fellowship. We've lost a lot of people, amen, through death, through transition, or whatever, but we are believing God. That he gonna turn things around, amen. amen. Let's let pass the dismisses. Even though Tanisha had the shots, all four, all three shots, she's been looking at the people that do not have no shots. So Tanisha and two other uh, people had got came down to the Lord as of yesterday. So just remember each of them. Gracious and loving Father, we come with praise. We come with thanksgiving for the preach word and those that respond to the word. We thank you for pastor. We thank you for all those that are working with the pastor, all those that are working with the sound. We thank you, my God, and praise, honor you for it. And we ask you, Lord, as we depart one from the other, we ask you to surround each of us with a divine protection. Keep us still, Lord, from the evil one. And those things, my God, that we need prayer for, we ask you to stretch for your body. Do those things that only you can do. And we're going to thank you, Father, and praise you for it. In Jesus' name.